What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Keto Connect Kitchen. Today we are making a dessert recipe using zucchini. I know, weird, right? But actually, grated zucchini makes a really good chocolate chip walnut bread. So that's what we're gonna make today. We're gonna start with half a cup of butter, softened, melted, in a large mixing bowl we have here. And to this, we're gonna add the erythritol. Give that a quick little whisk, make sure that's all combined. And if you are new to keto or low carb, uh, erythritol is a low carb sweetener that we use in basically all of our baked goods. You can find it mostly online. I don't think I've ever seen it in store on Amazon is where we get it. We are going to be actually using two sweeteners today erythritol and some liquid stevia, which we are about to add right now. So to our mixture, we're gonna add half a teaspoon of liquid stevia. That's about 50 drops here. And that may seem like a lot, but we're making a big loaf. This is a nine by five loaf. This is the pan we're using right here. So it's a lot of loaf. So it's not gonna be too sweet. And if you like your loaves really sweet, I would up the erythritol for sure. You can also just take out the stevia and add more erythritol if you don't have that or you don't wanna use any. But we're gonna add three large eggs and a teaspoon of vanilla. And let's give this one more whisk before we add the rest of our ingredients. And guys, if you've never had zucchini bread, it's a lot like banana bread. So if you guys are missing that, that moistness, that texture that you get from the banana, which I personally love. This is a great option. And all that's left to do now is add our dry ingredients before we start grating the zucchini. So we're gonna add a nice large pinch of salt, bring out the flavors, two teaspoons of baking powder, two tablespoons of coconut flour, and as you could tell, we're not using a lot of coconut flour, but it is very absorbent. And so it is very key to this recipe in order to make sure that this loaf doesn't come out too soggy because it really just pulls out the moisture, any leftover moisture from that zucchini. And then we're gonna add one and a half cups of almond flour. And the combination of almond flour and coconut flour really is key to a nice baked good. And let's give this another whisk. That is perfect. Okay, we're gonna set this aside and get started on our zucchini. So, we have a fairly large zucchini here. We're looking for about one and a half cups of grated zucchini. We have our grater here and we're just gonna get this grated. So as you can see guys, there is a lot of liquid coming off of this puppy. That looks good, right? It's about one and a half cups I'd say. So that was one pretty large zucchini, or you can do two medium. Either using a cheesecloth or several layers of paper towel, you can put your zucchini into the paper towels, and then we're gonna wring this out. So I'll get a bowl so I can show you how much liquid comes out. Oh no, it busted through. So a lot of you are gonna be upset we're wasting a lot of paper towels, so cheesecloth would be ideal. You make with what you have. All right, now we have our zucchini that's thoroughly squeezed. So we are just going to add it to our batter here. We are going to whisk this in. And once your batter sits for a bit, it's gonna get nice and thick, which is what we want. It's gonna make it hard to use a whisk, so we are gonna set that aside and grab a spatula. So that's nice and mixed. So all we're gonna add now is our walnuts and our low-carb chocolate chips. So you can do whatever ratio you want, as much walnuts as you want. I like a lot of walnuts and I like a lot of chocolate chips, so that's what we're going for here. We have half a cup of sugar-free chocolate chips. Lily's brand is a great option you can find in stores or online. And then we also have half a cup of walnuts, not really even chopped, nice big chunks. That's what I like. I want a nice bite when I'm going for a piece of this loaf. That is beautiful. So you can either grease your loaf pan or you can line it with parchment paper. We're gonna grease it with some coconut oil spray. Now all we're gonna do is pour the batter into here and then pop it in the oven. So. If you don't have your oven preheated, I apologize. Didn't tell you beforehand. 325 is what you want your oven preheated to. And then we're just gonna spread this out evenly. That looks good. We're gonna pop this in the oven, 325 
for about an hour. We'll check on it though at like the 45 minute mark because our oven runs slightly hotter. So it usually takes less time to bake stuff, to cook stuff. I'm guessing it'll be about an hour. This is a pretty big loaf. So we are back and it's beautiful. It is nice and golden brown. So this was in the oven for a total of 50 minutes. We tested it with a toothpick, which is I think the best way, especially with something like this, where you know the outside is browned and it's cooking, but you don't know about the inside. So insert the toothpick right into the middle. If it comes out clean, it's good to go. So 50 minutes, I would definitely start checking on it around 40 minutes because the edges do brown quicker than the rest cooks. Came out perfectly clean. Now we get to try it. So I'm just gonna slice. So end pieces are my favorite. I'm gonna slice off this end. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, beautiful. There's a cross section of some walnut, lots of chocolate chips, which is what I like to see. Ooh, and some walnut right here. Mm. That is the exact moistness of banana bread. It's so good and you can't taste the zucchini at all. So zucchini is pretty flavorless. And once you get rid of all that water, it really just makes a nice base for a baked loaf like this. Um, so you get a lot of walnut, you get chocolate chips. I don't know, I can't say much more, it's so good. And the outside's slightly crispy. And I will say for me, the sweetness is just perfect. So it's not very sweet at all. And if you like your loaves, your desserts, pretty sweet. I would recommend doing some more erythritol for sure. Six tablespoons instead of just two, and that'll definitely enhance the flavors, make it a lot sweeter of a loaf. Linked below in the blog post is the instructions on how to make this, the exact ingredients that we used, and have fun with it. Change up the flavors. Probably one of my new favorite loaf recipes. So check it out, guys. Thanks for joining us.